Some researchers, unfamiliar with the complexities of the battle for civil rights, mistakenly assume that the revivals William Branham held with Roy Davis in the late 1920s and early 1930s would have been racially segregated. With Davis being a former second in command of the Klan, and Branham joining Davis and other high-ranking members of the Klan, it would be very easy to assume that people with black skin would have not come within several miles from their revivals. Sadly, this is not the case. Having the demographic of people being discriminated against in the revivals gave white supremacists the opportunity to influence them, both in doctrine and in politics. This was the case from the early years, before Davis had even established his church in Jeffersonville. Roy Davis and Ralph Rader set up an interdenominational gospel tent in Water Park near the Municipal Bridge, and it was desegregated. Davis brought two truckloads of singers, and the Wesley Methodist Episcopal Church, a black church, was invited to sing, quote, old-time Negro spirituals. It was a massive tent, the largest of its kind in Jeffersonville, and the Lieutenant Governor, Edgar Bush, came to speak. During the revivals, Davis attacked Prohibition, which would have been popular with the Jeffersonville mob. He invited the Masons to attend the Divine Healing Night and pretended to be a converted spiritualist speaking in Indiana, a hot spot for spiritualists. In many ways, this revival would become the prototype for Branham's own healing revivals. You can learn this and more on william-branham.org.